Good evening, friends and comrades. I'm going to be reading my new article. <coughs> Excuse me. I wrote it um, yesterday. <coughs> it's entitled Occupy February 2012 Progress and Regress. This month, my involvement with Occupy has progressed in particular in my role on camp. I was on camp in Tampa longer than I was in Burlington or Boston. I led by example. Having a good experience with everyone, especially in dealing with conflict and safety, etc. Tampa is the only major camp left in Florida. With the exception of a new small camp under threat in West Palm, and a big camp nearly empty in Tallahassee, for purely symbolic purposes, and the month-long rainbow gathering camp till the end of the spring, Tampa is a, t a camp in Florida which is still willing to put up a fight. In the beginning of January, this camp began after the initial camp was shut down in Tampa, where they were only allowed to have sleeping bags and were constantly harassed by police. I arrived at this camp into its first month. Soon after Miami was shut down, was not able to go, and Occupy Orlando had already lost its camp. A park on private property was subsequently offered in Tampa, where there are approximately 30 tents, and the campers, occupiers, are harassed by police. It is, in fact, near the projects, the ghetto of West Tampa, and outreach in the poor black community by the camp has been made from white people who are also poor or against the system that oppresses us. In an area that used to raise suspicion with the mere presence of a white person, the campers are respected in the community, although more outreach is needed. In fact, shortly before I left, I witnessed cops racially profile a man near the camp, and the occupiers came out with cameras, which caused the cops to back off. It was an honor to plant my tent in this camp, given to me from Providence Hospitality, Rhode Island. The regress has come out at the end of this month upon my arrival back in New England. Upon going to Boston a couple days ago, I had independent mediation over allegations which did not work out. I'm not going to withdraw from the Occupy movement here in Boston or anywhere. Of course, I will respect the process and how people feel. In just a couple of days, I have court over getting arrested December 10th at Dewey Square. As I have stated, if a fair deal offer, I will take it this time. It's not worth the risk with how the movement has treated me. I was convinced by now I will be invited back to GA, a GA whose participation is dwindling. Now here comes the regress. How can we counter this? I still have allies in the community, indeed roots in the community. No one can deny I come to Boston. Some who want to continue the lies or just try that I be entry to GA, where autonomous action could be made against me. What about such action against the system we are supposed to be fighting? I am not the only one in Boston or from other occupies that have received false accusations. The same tactic is used. They are trained by the same people. That is not paranoia, but a fact. Even Chris Hedges has talked about the provocateurs and how they are sent in to occupy in recent articles to make character assassination of real activists or revolutionaries. Will such division continue to exist in the spring? Will we have an American spring or more petty fighting and more discussion of trivial things and not the real issues at hand? Unless the bloc is reformed in Boston, as it has in other occupies, the number of numbers of G from GA, which used to be 300, are now more like 30, will drop to 20, and so on. How is this consensus representing all the movement for decision making of vital importance? Let us not forget the mistakes that have been made in the movement and learn from them by correcting them, especially with our future actions for the cause, as justice and revolution of love for humanity, above all, must prevail for the survival of the movement in our society as a whole. Thank you very much.